So what is going on guys, it's Triple G here and in today's video we're going to be showing you how I beat the Saga mode solo. We beat Fenvir and we got to, I think it was day 13, 14 in the end. We beat everything and we bifrosted out. It's tough, but this guide will take you through everything that I did to get there. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking, commenting or subscribing to the channel. Join us over on Twitch, we stream five times a week and otherwise, let's get straight into this video. So first of all, let's talk about the starter kit. We're going to break this down from the get go. So you're going to want to grab the armor and the shield. That way you don't have to worry about farming at all at the start for a pickaxe or a tool. You can get straight in there and the pickaxe and the tool are really, really easy to get straight away. So the first day you're going to grab your tools as fast as you can and then the objective is to find as many barriers as possible. Now these barriers are super super important because these barriers contain the cornerstone, the raw iron and the, and the wooden planks that you need for your quarry. If by chance as well you can find the land of pools which is the kind of swamp area which is the light green area on the map that is excellent this will give you a head start when trying to get this famous blue axe that i talk about on my channel once you have destroyed a few barriers farmed some materials and hopefully killed some enemies you should be around level two this is where you're going to select the seer class now this class hands down in my opinion is the best class for solo so select that then these materials are going to go into the quarry and the lumber yard. The souls are going to go into your blacksmith. OK, so materials into the lumber yard, souls into the blacksmith. Level the blacksmith off, hopefully enough so that you can grab a blue item. If you need a weapon, go and grab yourself a green item in the interim. Then you're going to go out in the world. You do not need to defend the base, the village on that first night. The NPCs that you have on a solo are strong enough to defend so you want to get out in the world you want to be exploring as much as the map as you can once you've finished exploring majority of the map you should be around about day three of which your first Jotun is about to be ready so depending on the distance of the Jotun you can choose to go and engage that or you can wait for it to come to you I recommend you just go out there and get it then by this point you probably should be around about level three and you should be leveling up the perk that I recommend first is the temperature immunity this will allow you to freely go anywhere you want the whole rest of the run and kill the Jotun wherever he takes you. You don't need any gates on your village till around about day three. And if you have actually got that blue axe, you probably don't even need them on there till day four. With the Jotun dead, take all of the souls you've just got and put it into the quarry and the lumberyard. You need to have that up there. Now it's absolutely essential for you to have enough materials. By this point now, we need to be picking up a quest quests we need for fragments i recommend a witch camp one don't worry about rushing it you don't need to do it straight away you just have to do it over the course of this run you will also need to do two events in this run so look out for those these are really really simple they either you know collect an animal from x or go and rescue a prisoner now it's about returning back to your town on every night and defending your city if you can afford it at this point, add gates to your village. A little tip when defending is to open the gates for around about 10 seconds as you're rotating round. This will give the gates a bit of respite from the damage from those enemies, allow you to jump out and clear them from in front of there, shut the gate and move round in a rotation. It works really, really well. I never upgraded my gates through my successful run. By day six, you probably should have opened up majority of the map now when doing your quests and doing your farming. At this point, hopefully you found the underpass. This will be two caves connecting each other, one from a green or white area into a red area, which designates the heat. These two caves will also then be connected. So you go in one, out the other, and then you will be able to access the hideout. Now, I do not recommend you go to the hideout right now. You need to be fully geared to go into the hideout. Your second Jotun should be on the way at this point. So go off. Go and kill him, prioritize yourself, protect your village, and then you should have enough materials to go and make the gear you need. At this point, you should be looking at maybe blue armor, purple, if you are lucky. You definitely should have that blue axe by now. You also could potentially, depending on the Jotun, get the boulder's blade. The boulder's blade is a sword and it's exceptional for all circumstances. It's super effective against the hell things and it's also very good for Fenrir. Hopefully, while this has all gone on, you have found the bridge. If you haven't found the bridge yet, now's the time to go and explore those last little corners. Go out and find the bridge. 
At this point, you should have just finished killing the Jotun, so you should have a ton of souls. Go to the community chest. The quarry in the lumber yard should have been dropping materials in there. Go and grab all the cornered stone, raw iron, and the wooden planks, and then head up to the bridge. Deposit all the souls, two and a half thousand of them you're going to need, and all the iron, etc. If you don't have enough right now, don't worry. You still have time. You're about to go into the hideout. The quarry will still go. There's still enemies for you to kill to get souls. So now it should be around about day eight, meaning that it's hideout day. Now you need to go through the underpass and to access the hideout. I recommend getting the shrine right next to it so you can fast travel back if you die. This hideout is extremely tough. I usually die at least once while doing it. It'll have a few elites on the third floor. You need to kill all the enemies on the third floor in order to open the chest. The chest will give you the hideout fragments and you cannot fight the boss and get into the lair without it. So you have to get it. Once you've completed one quest, two events, the Jotuns and the hideout, you are ready to fight the boss. Make sure you travel back to the city, drop all your materials off. If you don't do that, your chest will be stuck up in Fenrir and you can't make and maybe any extra potions or any extra weapons that you might need. Before you actually go into the lair, it should be now around about day 10 or 11, maybe even 12. Make sure that you have killed that third Jotun and you have waited for the blood moon that is scheduled. The reason why we wait for the blood moon is because after each blood moon, you get a free night giving you a window of when you can go and kill Fenrir. So go out and find that third Jotun and then defend for the Blood Moon. You shouldn't have any problems doing that. You should be more than powerful enough to do that. Now, final thing is to gear check yourself. I recommend that if you're going to go into Fenrir, you're at a minimum of 300. Decent gear, decent armor. I went in with blue armor, but I would recommend you going in a little bit higher. And I use Baldur's Blade as my main weapon on Fenrir. Be sure to dodge his little attacks. Get out of the way of the Black Circle, which is his AOE. Hit his back legs, whose body be I'd recommend, and then just keep spinning the first ability of Baldur's Blade, and you should get Fenrir killed relatively easily. He has about 180,000k health when you do it, which is, you know, no more than a decent Yoan. If you are struggling, just make sure you've brought plenty of potions. Mana potions as well are really good because some of the weapons have a healing ability if you are struggling with running out of healing potions. Once he is dead, hopefully you're happy, you're buzzing, collect your gear and go through the portal. Do one last check at your village. Make sure your village is okay. The last thing you want is to be running to your Bifrost and your tree dies. So go back to your village very quickly. Make sure that nobody's hitting that tree. Your weapons should be absolutely super effective against all those health things. Clean them all up. Give yourself a window to get into the Bifrost and get out of there. Alternatively, you can actually stay there, get to day 16 so that you can unlock the Warden. So there you have it guys, there is my in-depth guide to how you solo Fenrir and Saga mode. I had a ton of fun making this video, I had even more fun doing it, it's tough but super super rewarding. If you've enjoyed this video please give it a like, comment or subscribe to the channel or join us over on Twitch, we stream five times a week and otherwise I'll catch you on the flip.